fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Ohio silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I am Silver. Hey! Jagged bolts of lightning streaked across the sky as night riders swept down on the small ranch owned by Cephas Gilder. And when they left, they took the bar sea cattle with them. Get along! Get going there! Come to the south! Hey, hey, hey. The herd was driven into a rope corral in a nearby valley, where men were waiting with fires to heat their running irons. All right, you men have your orders. Now hurry up and change those brands. I promise delivery of this stock by daybreak. We'll make delivery all right, Mo. We get a lot of time. The rustlers were headed by the Barton brothers, three in number, who had settled in the town of Sagebrush in the heart of the cattle country. They had achieved power and influence as well as money in an incredibly short time. It was generally supposed that cattle stealing played an important part in their progress, but this could not be proved. Everyone, including the sheriff, found himself helpless against Mo Barton and his brothers Jake and Hank. Tonto, the Lone Ranger's faithful Indian companion, had gone into sagebrush to investigate the rumors. The masked man was waiting in camp. When he saw Tonto returning, he knew that he had brought news. Tonto wouldn't push his horse at that pace unless he'd found trouble. We'll saddle up, Silver. Silly boy, easy. Oh, Scott, old fella. Old fella. What is it, Tonto? Oh, there's plenty of trouble, Kimosabe. You get ready to ride. Yes, I'll have Silver saddled in just a minute. What did you find out in sagebrush? I'll me learn all about three brothers. Are they as bad as we heard? Oh, them worse. Some ranchers already leave town. Others plan to go. Oh, what about the law? The sheriff, him helpless. Fellow named Gilder. Him need help plenty quick. Gilder? Ah. On way to town, you see cabin near Bendin River. That's where Gilder live. Anything else to tell me? Well, you learn plenty at Gilder Cabin. All right, Toto. I'll go on ahead. Easy, big fellow. Well, Silver! Cephas Gilder had known happiness in his small cabin near the river bend. 
But that was before the coming of the Barton brothers. Hunger, discouragement, and defeat were the dominant forces in the Gilder home. Anne, I've thought it over from every angle. Cephas, please. I've sat for half an hour, just like I promised. But instead of being calmed down, I'm madder than ever. Look at Billy there, sick and hungry. Look at you, starving. Cephas, I'm not starving, and it isn't hunger that's wrong with our boy. Billy is sick. Of course he's sick. But the right food would help. I tell you, Ann, Mo Barton is trying to lick me. And it looks like he'll do it unless Maybe I get... Maybe it'd be better if we just leave here and go somewhere else. That's just what Barton wants. That's why he stole my cattle. You can't prove that you he... can't prove, can't prove. That's just the trouble. Nothing can be proved against the Bartons. But I know who stole my cattle. I know who cut off our credit at the store. It's Barton. He and his brothers want me to vacate so they can grab this land. Please, please, Cephas. If you've got to see Barton, don't take that gun. If if you're unarmed, he can't shoot you. He's been asking for a showdown, and he's going to get it. I'll call on him in his cafe. No, no, please. Oh, Cephas, Cephas. If he could only realize that one man can't beat the Barton brothers. Mother. Oh, Billy. You're awake. Mommy. Where's Daddy going? Well, he... He's gone into town, dear. He he had some business to take care of. Now... Now, how do you feel after your nap? I... I guess I'm all right. But it... It's so hot here. It's not too hot, Billy. It's just your imagination. Why, it's cooler today than it was yesterday. I... I'm hot. I can hardly breathe. I'll fix you some broth. I'm not hungry. I hear a horse. Maybe your father's changed his mind. Maybe he's come back. Mrs. Gilder. What? Mommy, he's masked. I came to see your husband. No. No, please, go away. My my son isn't well. Tell Mr. Barton to, to send you some other time. Later. Oh, later, please. Any time, but not now. Barton didn't send me here. We have nothing worth stealing. Please, Mr. I didn't come here to steal anything. I came to help you. But that mask. Perhaps I wear it so the Barton brothers won't know the identity of a man who sides against them. You... You're siding against the Barton brothers? What's the matter, son? Are you under the weather? Uh, I'm all right. Let me feel your forehead. Billy has a fever. I... Has the doctor been here? There is no doctor in Sagebrush. I'm all right. I I don't need a doctor. How old are you, Billy? I'm 12. Why, you're practically a man... I have some medicine in my saddlebag. It will make you feel much better. Will you step outside, Mrs. Gilder? Yes, of course. Good. Do, do you think Billy is, is seriously ill? Uh, here's the medicine. Give Billy a teaspoonful of it right away. I'm sure it will help. I, I don't understand you, mister. An Indian is on the way. He's my friend. You stay with you and Billy. But who are you? I came to find out about the Barton brothers. I had heard that they were trying to take over this community. And I wanted to learn if that was true. It's true, all right. I'd like to talk to your husband. Cephas. Oh, my sakes alive. I, I forgot about poor Cephas. He's gone into town. He'll be shot. Shot? He went to the cafe to have a showdown with Mo Barton and his brothers. Barton's own cafe? Yes. When Tonto comes, tell him to stay here till I return. Steady, Silver. Easy, big fellow. Where are you going? To Barton's Cafe. Come on, Silver. There were quite a few people in the cafe during the afternoon, and all three Barton brothers were on hand. They looked up when Cephas Gilder came through the batwing doors, holding his gun in readiness. Hey, Mo, look at that fool. Looks like he wants trouble. Well, he'll be accommodated. Hank's watching him from over yonder. You, Mo Barton. You're the one I want to see. Put that gun away. What's the matter with you, Gilder? Have you lost your senses? That's it all I'm going to stand from you. I'm here for a showdown. Hey, take it easy. Hey, let me go. Hang on to him, Hank. I've got him. Drop that gun. No, i that's the ticket, Jake. You, no you, use trying to get away. Uh, You're lucky I just cracked your arm. When a man comes waving hardware like you, he deserves to be shot. What's the matter with you, Gilder? You. The three buttons. Uh, 
I guess I was just plain loco to think I could come here waving a gun. I should have known better. But my boy's sick. Listen, Mo. You know that I was cleaned out by rustlers? I know that you said a lot of things around town hinting that my brothers and I stole your cattle. I've got to have cash. I've got to have money enough to get some food and to bring a doctor from North Flat. So you came here with a gun to stick us up, huh? I... I'm so worried, I, I don't know what I'm doing. All you got to do is pull out of here. But the land is all I've got. The land and that house I built. If you can't make a living in sagebrush, go somewhere else. I can't even do that with my boys so sick. Look here, Mo. I know you'd like to get my land. Well, you can have it. Just give me cash enough to get on my feet and get a doctor for my boy. When he's well, I'll clear out. Ah. Oh. So you want to sell me your land? Just, just a little cash so I can get some goods at the store. A little cash won't help you. You owe the store over a hundred dollars. You can't get food until that's paid up. Well, I And if you be... think I'm going to pay a hundred dollars for your land, you're crazy. It's worth a lot more and you know it. Not to me. Put him out, Hank. Come on. Uh, wait. You heard wait. what my brother said. I'll give you a hand, Hank. We toss him clean over the hitch rail. Oh, so fast. Hey, who's that? He's masked. Who are you, mister? What's the idea of wearing a mask in my cafe? You fit the description of Mo Barton. That's my name. You're Hank. That's right. And you're Jake. Yeah. I'm giving you just two seconds to get out of here. And you can take Gilder along with you. It'll take me longer than that to deliver a message to you three. I said two seconds, mister. And the time is up. Oh? What are you going to do about it? This! No! Anyone else want to go for a gun? My arm, my arm's busted! You, how did you get that gun out so fast? Ask your brother Jake. He was watching me. Jake, help me. My arm's busted. You'll pay for that, mister. His arm isn't broken. My bullet hit his gun. Barton, you're the one who's going to pay. That's big talk for one man. I'll try to back it up. Gilda, you better get back to your house. And be a man there to take care of your son. Oh. But who are you? My name wouldn't mean a thing, but this bullet may identify me. Here, Barton, take a look. Hey, what's that mean? Uh, let me see it, Hank. Here you are. Yeah, it looks like silver. It is silver. Silver? A silver bullet? The men in the cafe who had been watching Barton's table with keen interest had heard many stories of a tall masked man who was identified by a silver bullet. A ripple of low murmurs swept the room. A lone ranger. That's so you're here. the lone ranger. We've heard about you, monsieur. You've been riding in pretty good luck so far. You're said to be a smart hombre. Well, if you're really smart, you'll get out of this town. And fast. Is that all you have to say? Hank said all that needs to be said. Then it's my turn to speak. Barton, you and your brothers have been driving honest men out of this community. To make room for crooks like yourself. You're calling us crooks? Yes, you've robbed and cheated, you've stolen cattle. You're you've making done... accusations, mister, but when it comes to backing them with proof, Who you... did steal Gilder's cattle? Anyone will tell you there's been rustlers working around here. And you don't know anything about it? <laughs> of course not. You don't know where the Gilder cattle was taken? How would I know? You'd better know, Barton. Because if Gilder's cattle isn't back on his land by sunrise, we'll meet again. All the rest of you men, you heard what I said. I'm giving Barton until sunrise to return the stolen cattle to Gilder. Go on, Gilder. Walk ahead of me. I'll ride back to your house with you. But I Get don't... going. I wonder if one of you men is going to try a shot at my back when I leave this place. <laughs> I doubt it. Hank, you've got a gun. No, no, I'm not taking any chances, Mo. Anyway, he's already outside. Run up to the door and throw a bullet into his back. No, not me. It's too dangerous. He's a lone ranger. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. After leaving the cafe and the Barton brothers, the Lone Ranger accompanied Cephas Gilder home. During the ride, the masked man outlined a plan. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh. The idea came to me, Gilder, when Tonto told me about some ranches around here. Friends of the Barton brothers who have been able to increase their herds. Mister, as soon as I see how my boy is, I'll do anything you suggest. Good. If necessary, I'll ask Tonto to ride for the nearest doctor. That'd be North Flat. Take a long time to get the doctor from there. We'll see what Tonto says. Uh, you could have knocked me over with a feather when the boys in the cafe called you the Lone Ranger. I hope that someone would know the meaning of the silver bullet. Someone? Sakes alive, most everyone in the cafe knew what it meant. That paint horse there. Well, that's Tonto's. He's the Indian you spoke of? Yes. There he is at the door. He must have heard us coming. Now, this is Gilder, Tonto. How? Howdy, Tonto. How's the boy? Him got plenty fever. Is it any worse? A me fixed cold towel, plenty blankets. Tonto, do you think he'll get well? Of him sleep now. Maybe fever breaks soon. Gilder, I want you to go over to the sheriff's office. What'll I tell him? I know that Sheriff Lawson would like to get something on the Barton brothers. If you cooperate in our plan, he may get the evidence he wants before daybreak. But, mister, you... You don't expect the Bartons to do as you told them. And what that, Kimasabi? I told the Barton brothers they'd have to return the Gilder cattle by daybreak or take the consequences. There were a lot of men in the cafe, and every one of them heard me. The Bartons won't do that. I didn't expect them to. Now get back to your horse, Gilder, and ask the sheriff if he'll line up some deputies and ride with us tonight. All right, I'll ask him. But just one thing. What's that? Will it be all right to tell Sheriff Lawson he's to ride with the Lone Ranger? Yes. <laughs> then I'll guarantee we'll have his help. I'll get back as soon as I can and let you know what he says. He's here. Uh, get him. Tonto had made a fairly complete investigation in the vicinity of Sagebrush and had gathered information upon which the masked man based his plan. That night after dark, a party of horsemen moved across the plain. The sheriff rode between Gilder and the Lone Ranger. A group of riders, all sworn in as deputies, were close behind. Right up right here. Right up, boys. Why are we stopping here, mister? Sheriff, this is where we go into action. Well, right over yonder in the valley is a box hole ranch. That's right, Sheriff. And the owner is a friend of Mo Barton. Uh, his name's Grogan, uh, Sam Grogan. <laughs> He's an ornery critter. Uh, Tonto reported that Grogan recently doubled the size of his herd. He did. And it's pretty generally suspected that he bought stolen cattle. Grogan's cattle is all branded with a box O. It would be a simple matter to make a box O out of the bar C by using a running iron. That's just what was done. I'm sure of it. If that could only be proved. Maybe we can prove it. Yeah, what do we do now? Sheriff, just ahead of us, there's a line fence. Yep, there's Grogan's. We've got to take down that fence and move some of the cattle out. Then repair the fence. Oh, doggone. After that, we're going to use a running iron. You have one, don't you, Cephas? Yeah, I made one. Well, there's a law against using or owning a running iron. Tonight, we're adapting the law to local conditions. Now, come on, let's get to work on that fence. Come on, boy. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. At the line fence, two of the sheriff's men stepped forward with wire cutters, snipping the wire. There's one strand cut. All right, get the other. All right. That's it. Now pull the wire back. All right, I'll get it. I sure hope Grogan don't hear what's going on. I don't think he will. His house is a long way from here. Come on, boys. Let's get that cattle. Hold right. on, Yeah. Them over this way. Get there. Riding hard, the deputies followed the directions of the masked man, cutting about 50 longhorns away from the rest of the livestock. Keep them close together. Drive them through that opening in the fence. This is showing up my cattle. Get up there. Get along, you Chris. Go on back home. There was no interference as the night riders drove a closely packed herd through the opening in the fence, then on towards Cephas Gilder's ranch.
When the small herd was back on Gilder property, the sheriff and his men built fires, heated a running iron, and went to work with dispatch to help Cephas enlarge and change the already altered marks of identification on the Longhorns. The Lone Ranger, meanwhile, kept a sharp watch in the direction of Sam Grogan's spread. Doggone it, Cephas. I'm sure stretching the law. This plan misfires, I'll be out of a job. I know you will, Sheriff. Be out of a job anyway if the Barton brothers became more powerful. They'd have their own sheriff. Yeah, I reckon that's right. I wish I knew how my boy was coming. Toto's spending the night in the house, Gilder. You'll come here for you if Billy's condition gets critical. All right, let that critter up. Get down to the next week. Right. Uh, just three or four more, Sheriff. We'll be through. Hey, you watching for Drogan? Yes, yeah, Sheriff. Been no sign of him or his men. We must have got away from the box so without being heard. Rogan will miss his cattle in the morning. That's when you can look for him, Cephas. I just hope things work out. Oh, wait a minute. Hmm? Someone's coming. One horseman. I hear hoofs. He's coming from the direction of my place. Yes, it's Toto. The Indian, he's coming here. You said he'd come if Billy got worse. Steady, Gilder. Wait till we hear what Tano has to say. Oh, Scott, oh, fella. Oh, fella. Oh. What is it, Tano? What is it? What about my boy? Well, me come with news. Yes, yes, I know. Good news. Is Billy going... Did you say good news? That's right. Little while ago, Billy plenty hot. Then start to sweat. That's a good sign. Now fever broken. Now you know boy get well. He's going to get well. You hear that, Sheriff? I'm mighty glad, Cephas. He's going to get well. That means I've got to keep this ranch. It means we've got to make Sagebrush a fit place to live in. It means we've got to put the Bartons where they belong. Hurry it up, boys. Get finished with that, Brandon. Then we'll see what happens when Sam Grogan comes here in the morning. Breakfast time found Billy Gilder sitting up in bed, greatly improved, and taking nourishment from a bowl of boar broth prepared by Tonto. Mrs. Gilder was serving breakfast provided by the Lone Ranger to her husband and the sheriff, as well as the masked man. Pass your cup, Sheriff. I'll warm up your coffee. Mm, that's right. Fine coffee, Miss Gilder. You know, we're beholden to the masked man for the food. I... Ann, what's the matter? Cephas, look out the window. Over yonder. There's some horsemen riding up. Let me see. Maybe that's what we've been waiting for. See if those are Grogan's men. They are. And there's Grogan himself. <laughs> Examining the cattle that came in here last night. Well, that's what we've been waiting for. Where are you going? I'm going to talk to Grogan. When he leaves here, he'll head for the home of the Barton brothers. And that's my cue. You know the plan? You bet I do. You can count on me for my part. Gilda, you stay right here at home with your boy. You won't be needed at the showdown. Gosh, Ann. What did we ever do to deserve the help of the Lone Ranger? <laughs> Mo Barton and his brothers Hank and Jake had finished their breakfast. They lingered at the table. Ah, confound it, Hank. The more I think about it, the more I wish you'd thrown a couple of shots at that masked man yesterday. Yeah, I saw it happen to you, Jake, when you went for a gun. When that critter's bullet hit my six gun, felt like my whole arm was blowed off. My hand's still lame. Yeah, you're lucky you got a hand. Hey, Mo. What do you suppose he meant by telling us we better return the Gilder cattle? I don't care what he meant. Think he can make trouble for us? How can he? Would have made trouble if we had returned the cattle. That would have been the same as confessing we stole it. Maybe that's what he hoped it happened. Oh, oh, oh. Speaking of the Gilder cattle, I just saw Sam Grogan pass the window. Is that who reined up? Yeah. Come on in, Sam. What are you thieving? Hey, what's the matter? Hey, what's the matter with you? Put that put gun down. down. I'll put it down when I get what I came for. You're a fine friend, Mo. Did you think I let you get away with robbing me like you did the others? Sam, I don't know what you're talking about. No? I was in the cafe yesterday when the Lone Ranger told you what to do. But I didn't think you'd do it. Do what? Return the guild of cattle. What are you what? talking about? Now, what's the matter with you, Mo? I thought you were too big to be bluffed by a man who wears a mask. But I see you're not. You're scared of him. You're taking orders from the Lone Ranger. Oh, uh, like fun I am. Don't lie to me. I know what I saw. I missed cattle from my ranch this morning. I followed clear tracks right straight the Gilda spread. And I recognized my own critters, the ones I bought from you. With your box, old brand? My box, old brand. <laughs> the box O's become the double box Lazy Eight. I never heard of it. Well, it's a brand, and it's registered. And Gilder owns it. 
Grogan, you're barking up the wrong tree. This is all news to Save me. Save your lives for the sheriff. You made my brand in the double box Lazy Eight. Just the same as you made the bar C into a box O when you sold that stock to me. You sold me Gilder's cattle. It was stolen cattle. And you knew it was stolen cattle. How was I to know? Why, you four flusher. You knew you weren't getting honest cattle for the price you paid me. You knew it was stolen cattle when you bought it. And you're dead wrong when you accuse me of taking it away from you and running it back onto the Gilder private. Who's well, right, you... Grogan? There's a mistake someplace. You bet there is. Hey, that's a sheriff. There he is, over there, that window. Grogan, boys. Sheriff. Uh, hey, what is this? What are you here for? We came here to see what Sam Grogan would have to say. We heard plenty. At last, we got evidence against you, Bob. What do you mean? Evidence? And you too, Grogan. You can testify in court against him. You can go on trial along with him. As being a receiver of stolen cattle, aiding in the bet and crooks, being an accessory after the fact. That's law. Uh, it's a frame-up. We never stole Sam Grogan's cattle. You stole Gilder's. I just took it back to him with the Lone Ranger helping me. Now, I savvy. It was a frame-up from the start. He knew we wouldn't return the cattle. But he figured that Grogan would know you as being yellow hounds. He figured you'd stolen them back. We got you in at last as evidence. Now, by Juniper, this town will be cleaned up. Honest men will be in charge again. That's the way the Lone Ranger does things. This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle and directed by Charles D. Livingston. Tonight's story was written by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Brace Beamer.